today we are going to see how to create a stylized fire attack. I think it's an awesome way for you to further develop your stylized skills, plus who doesn't like to play with fire? And he does, definitely. We are going to see some very cool tricks and if you want to download this effect, it's all available on my Patreon's page, links below, or my website. So without further ado, let's jump right into this, but first, a Brilliant ad. Brilliant is a great interactive way to learn on mobile or on the browser. You can absorb STEM topics at your own pace, from simple science to advanced technology passing through engineering concepts and mathematic problems. Everything is here, this is just a brilliant way to evolve your knowledge. Everything is fun, interactive and very well paced for you. Brilliant for me, after the scientific course has been really awesome by letting me play as Sherlock Holmes, deducing which robot did what with only a few clues. That's right, I've been diving into the logic courses and they are super cool and super intriguing by letting me wonder who did what and play with my critical thinking. If you haven't tried this, you are missing out on this amazing opportunity, which is free for 30 days. So yeah, visit brilliant.org slash prod or click the link below and the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So what are you waiting for? Go learn something new. This is using essentially two meshes. We have this circle and then the cone. So we can apply a texture with a specific shader. So let's go ahead and start with the cone. It's very simple, I'm gonna walk you through, I'm gonna use Blender, by the way, 3.4.1, and we can start by selecting everything with A and press delete. We want a clean scene, and then press Shift A to add the plane. We can rename it to Cone01, and with Tab we want to enter in edit mode, and select these two vertices right here, and by pressing S, I'm gonna lock it in the X, by pressing X, and scale it down, something like this. Let's add a few edge loops with Ctrl R and you can scroll up to add 4 of them. Let's do the same but this time horizontally. Let's add around 5. Now we can make this a little bit browner by selecting these two vertices right here. And as you can see, if I press O, I turn on proportional editing and we can select this type of influence, the sphere one. And now with G, I'm gonna lock it in the Y and as you can see, you can scroll up or down to Increase or decrease the influence on the nearby vertices. Something like this should be fine, by the way. It's useful to have the pivot at the beginning of the mesh, so I'm going to select these two vertices right here and press Shift S to choose cursor to select it. I'm gonna go back to object ball by pressing Tab and with Ctrl Alt Shift C, I'm gonna select Origin to 3D cursor. And now every time we scale this up or down, it will be from that position. And that's pretty much it. If you want to add a little bit of volume to this, feel free to do it. This is going to be flat. Let's imagine it's for a MOBA with a top-down camera or something like that. A very important step is the UV. So I'm going to drag a new window from the bottom left corner. And up here, I'm going to switch this to UV Editor. And enter in edit mode with Tab. Select everything with A. And let me show you a cool trick. If down here we select the Shader Editor, create a new material, and then search for image texture. Press the new button so we can create a color grid. Press OK and connect this to the base color. Up here, I'm going to switch this to this type of shading so you can see the texture. Basically, we are going to, with the shader, do exactly this scroll a texture. But we want this to move faster in the beginning and slower towards the end of the mesh. So how do we do it? We do it by adjusting the UVs. Let me remove this image by pressing on this cross. And now with B I'm gonna select this row of vertices and push it down. As you can see on the right view, it creates a certain type of influence in the text, the way it's mapped. I'm gonna select the second row and push it down with G and lock it in the Y, by the way. What matters is this distance right here, it's going to be a little bit bigger, and then I'm going to repeat this, 
but the distance in relation to the last row it's going to be higher until the last row something like this now if i scroll this up as you can see the image is faster in the beginning of the mesh and slower towards the end of the mesh. That's exactly what we want. Last thing we can do is, in object mode, we can press tab, search for shade smooth, or go up here in object and select shade smooth. And now we are ready to save this blend file if you want, and then export with our cone selected. Go to file, export, fbx. Turn on selected objects, rename this to cone, for example, and I'm going to export this directly to my project in Unity. So now I can go to Unity and here we go, we have the mesh. I'm only going to say the scale factor is 100 and then press apply. And now we can use this in a VFX graph. So let's create one in a folder, Visual Effect Graph. And drag and drop it to the scene. Press the edit button to open VFX graph. And from here, well, we don't want this to be constantly spawning particles. So let's remove this up here and spawn and use a single burst, a burst with one particle. We also don't want this to move. Let's remove this set velocity. And the lifetime is not random. Let's turn it off. One second for the lifetime for now. Yep. And down here, well, we don't want to emit a quad, we want to emit a mesh. So let's drag a new line and search for mesh, exactly. And now we can assign the cone we have created, right here. We probably don't see anything because it's small. Let's increase the size with the set size, let's set it to 1. Yeah, we don't see it because, let me go, okay, here we go. We only see one face of this, we still need to rotate this, right? So. In the initialized particle we want to use a set angle, minus 90 for the x and 180 for the y. Here we go. I'm going to push this up by a value of 0 0.5 in the y, like this. And basically now we want to create a texture like this. It's very important. Textures are one of the most important things when creating visual effects. So I'm going to show you how to quickly create something similar to this. I'm going to use Krita because it's free. And in here we can create a new file with 2048 by 2048 with a black background. And on this empty layer we want to select the brush, make sure it's white, the color. And the brush type is Airsoft, this one. You can customize it here, by the way. The idea now is that if we press Shift W we enter wrap mode and we can create seamless textures. That's super important. Brush opacity is at 40 more or less. And make sure you paint more or less on the left of the image. We don't want to touch the border. We want to paint something like this. See, it doesn't touch the border. That's very important. And then on the right, we want to paint something similar. And now we can increase the brush opacity to 100%, but decrease the radius and pass again with a brush stroke like this. Now let's select the eraser at 40% and start removing in some areas. I'm just doing a few clicks here and there, not that much, you know. Creating some cavities, make it look like a fire, for example, you know, a stylized fire. Make sure it doesn't touch the borders on the left or on the right. Now you can select the Blender Smear brush. The opacity controls the strength, mine is around 60, 50. And in some areas you can, well, drag what is painted like this and make it a little bit more flamey if you want, but not that much, you know? Once you are satisfied with this, you can get out of the wrap mode and then you can go ahead and export without the black background, turn it off, export as a PNG to your Unity project. In Unity we can turn on Alpha's transparency so we can see the texture properly. Alright, this will do perfectly. And if you assign it here, this is what we have right here. As you can see, it's very compact at the beginning and then stretch it towards the end of the cone. That looks beautiful. Let me increase the size to 2. Let's imagine that the cube is a character. Now the magic comes from a shader. We need this to scroll, we need a mask as well, and a few more things that we are going to see. So right click on a folder and let's create a blank shader graph. Double click to open it up. 
and in the graph inspector the target is universal the cool thing is that we can say it supports vfx graph this shader it's going to be unlit we don't need lights to influence this it's going to be transparent and we don't need to cast shadows and if you want this to be two-sided so you can see both of the faces of your mesh you can do it right here by the way so here's a few properties that we are going to need basic properties if you are been following the channel this is a common practice but we want to start with a color and then a texture 2d for the main texture main text and then a vector 2 for the main text styling and another vector 2 for the main text speed this is our basic setup the color is in hdi mode with white for the color and alpha at 100 drag it around here and then drag the main text and sample this main text with a sample text to 2d multiply both and connect to the base color make sure alpha clip is at zero and now we can split the last node because we need transparency by the way let's assign our text to the main text like this and if you connect the a to the alpha as you can see we have transparency don't worry if your text is black and white what's important is the main preview down here all right so now we need this to scroll up and down and do a few more things right to scroll we can use a tiling and offset we have the tiling and the offset and we can connect this to the v of the sample text 2d the offset will scroll this up and down and the tiling will control how many times it repeats in the x or in the y so default values for the main text tiling is 1 1 for the x and y connect it and the main text speed well we need time a time variable exactly if we multiply these two together we are animating this value and we can connect to the offset now we increase the y and it scrolls up and down right if you save it now in vfx graph we can assign the shader if you don't see this you can go to edit in preference in visual effects turn on experimental operator slash blocks and now if you click here we can assign our shader here we go looking very nice already it's beautiful to see this in action i'm always admired by how cool visual effects for games is right so that's one step down and in a big one now let's increase the max text speed to minus 1.6 for example but we still need to get rid of these hard edges on the beginning and on the end we want to mask this out and the quickest way is to go back to Krita and create a very simple text I'm going to create a new file with 2048 by 2048 black background I'm going to pick the brush tool I'm going to pick the hair brush soft white for the color and with more or less this size on this new layer we can go ahead and do a brush stroke to the right then one to the left and another one to the right until we have something like this one last thing we can do is, is select the smear brush and now with 54 the opacity and in the brush editor decrease the fade to zero now we want to create some cavities at the top and at the bottom sometimes i push outward the idea is to have a mask similar to this one with a lot of details once you have this you can add the black background and export once again as a png and call it for example the gradient 01 back in unity we can turn on alpha's transparency now on the shader we need to modify this a little bit before multiplying with the color we need to multiply this with our mask like this and now we can create here a texture 2d call it mask and a vector 2 for mask offset we can sample the mask and connect to the multiply down here we don't see nothing because we haven't assigned the texture let's assign the gradient that we created and as you can see we get this beautiful fade in the beginning and in the end and for the mask offset we are going to use a tiling and offset node once again but only because of the offset and without the time variable because we want to animate this via vfx graph so let's save it let's go back to vfx graph and if we play with the y from the mask offset we get this really cool motion this really cool effect but it's repeating 
What we can do in this case is go to the gradient texture and say the wrap mode is clamp and then apply. This way, when we offset the mask texture, we will create this effect instead. We will show it in the beginning and hide it in the end. And it seems like a burst of flames. It's super cool and really nice effect. So before doing that, we can actually take care of the color. For example, we could pick an orange similar to this, not so red, and increase the intensity. And we will get a really beautiful effect. I have a bloom on my scene, a global volume with bloom, by the way. But instead of that, let's save this call on these swatches down here. And now we are going to use a gradient, so we can fade these in and fade these out. And technically we could even use different colors on this gradient. We are going to say the first color key is the swatch color that we saved. And for the last key, it's the same color, but with a much lower intensity, like this. We can connect to the color and, well, nothing happens because we need to animate this time value. It's very simple, we have a node that does it, which is the age over lifetime, which represents the lifetime of this particle, of this mesh in this case, and it's normalized from 0 to 1. Cool, it fades in, it fades out, now we can also animate the mask offset, the Y value, and this time we can use a sample curve. We are going to go from 0 0.88, 0 0.9 for example, to minus 0 0.9. So, on this graph, you can start by saying the first key is around 0 0.85, 0 0.88 and for the last key, we can also use the right click, edit and say the value is minus 0 0.9. If you connect this to the Y, we need to animate this time value, we can use the age over lifetime again, no problem at all, and if we play this, here we go. Look how awesome it is. One thing we can do is like pause the scrolling, give a sensation that it stays there a little longer. For example, on this curve, we can create a key more or less around 0 0.3, a little bit before that, and another one after 0 0.7, for example, push this one a little bit up, and the other one a little bit down. This way it looks better, it seems like it stays there a little bit longer, spitting fire, you know, and then it fades out. Really cool effect, very nice. One last thing that I can show you is how to create this concentration of energy, at least this circle. In that case, we need to delay this, so let's create a property, a float, with a default value of 0 0.6. And the way we delay this is by selecting the spawn here and say before loop. And then connect the delay. And that's it for the circle. We need a new mesh. And in Blender, we can start with Shift A by adding a cylinder. And the cap fill type is nothing. And if we enter in edit mode, select this vertices with B and scale them down to zero with S. Push them in the Z minus two. Select everything. And again with G, push it in Z a value of one. And that's it. If I quickly apply the material, you can see how it works. Let's just add a couple of edge loops with Control R. And that's it. We can rename this to circle 02 and export it as an FBX to Unity. In VFX Graph, we can copy this wall particle system. Control C, Control V, copy and paste it. The delay is going to be the lifetime. We can remove this delay in the inspector, by the way. And down here, we can switch the cone 0 to with the circle we just created. Oh yeah, we need to disconnect this to the mask of set. And oh, the circle 0 to, we need to say the scale factor is 100. And now in the mask of set, here we go, we can see how it works. We can see its values, the range. It's going to be something between 0 and minus 0 0.9. Looks cool. You can also increase the main text styling to 1.5, so you can have three fires like this, yeah. So on the curve, we can say now it's going to start at 0. You can delete this, and the last key it's going to be minus 0 0.9. And if you connect this to the Y, here we go. We have the circle gathering energy and then spitting fire. Now it's really up to you to add a few more things. For example, you can add a flare as well, and then some sparks, some particles when it gathers energy. I highly recommend you to check out my channel if you wanna learn more about, for example, how to create these flares and how to create these sparks. I'm sure it will help you. And if you wanna get this project and see how it works closely, it's all available on my Patreon's page. 
links below you can download this and many other effects as well it's all available there plus you support the channel and you keep me going which is awesome and by the way thank you to each patron that supported me last month and as usual a quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons which are 3D Sorcery, Alexander Brazy, Alper Aichai, Achilles Benitez, Aviato Bali, Baz, Christopher Vivas, Kruby Dubidu, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Diego Marcos, Duitron, Effect Yellow, El, El Sheriff, Easy, Faisal Sheikh, Fang Striker, Gabriel, Giulio Benvenuti, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, Guo Peng Zhao, Jack, Jason Marrero, Joe Arakash, Jürgen Van Oshrot, Casey Miller, Karen Campi, Curbs J, Lee Nolt, Lutuli, Lucas Rocha, Manuel Mora, Maria Hirna, Mark Hanum, Mosen and Safdaran, Murat, Naru, Nathan and Susan Hill, Neogentrix, NR, Oitsk, Pradip Sands, Q216, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Rohit Gupta, Verisuta, Will Hughes, Will Polian, Alexandra Billy, Dong Mao Dong, and Chim Kionlin. Your support is super much appreciated, guys. Thank you very much. And to anyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.